Good morning, everybody. It's time for Fast Fun Friday. So today I am going to work in this little journal I showed you a while back that I am just doing napkin art in, and we just did one so far. So I already had just played with some mediums and some paints to experiment on these two pages just to experiment with some background techniques. I'm not married to either one of them, not crazy about them, so I'm just going to go over them both with this napkin, which I think is really pretty, and I'm just going to kind of center it so I have some of the floral design around the edges, and then I have this central area that I can kind of play with with something else. So I've already, it was three ply, I already took the um, two plain white plies off and I am just going to cover these pages with matte medium and then put the napkin down. And when you, if you haven't worked with napkins using them this way for a background paper. Um, normally I would always say put your matte medium or Mod Podge or whatever you're using glue on both the substrate and the back of whatever you're going to glue into the journal. But in the case of napkins, they are so thin that it makes them, if you put glue all over the back, it's going to make them hard to handle and also increase the likelihood that you may end up ripping it. So you are going to just put it down. I, for one, don't mind wrinkles. I just want to press it into the spine there, the groove of the spine. So I don't mind the wrinkles. I don't really want bubbles. It's pretty dry. Once it's dry, you can just trim this off with scissors or you can take a small paintbrush and just wet it and if you just run it right along the edge like that it will tear real easy just tear it back against the edge of the page and it will come right off right where you want it to and I've had people say well why don't you just do that while it's wet with the glue if you do that you run the risk of tearing up into the wet napkin that's you're trying to adhere to the page. Once it's dry and stuck to the page, then it's not going to tear up back up onto the page. Because this is doesn't have any glue on it. It's not wet right there. And if you don't like the fuzzy edges that it leaves, then by all means just take your scissors and trim those off. I found a copyright free image. It was um, three images of these ladies on pet cigarette cards. They're cards that used to come on the back of pack packages of cigarettes. Um, so they were like a collectible card. So I just fussy cut them out and I'm going to put them down and then we'll give them some bodies I think. I'm going to extend their bodies and 
paint around them. So I'm just going to put them down with matte medium and dry them and I'll be back. Okay, I pulled out some acrylic paint in Heritage Blue. It's a Delta Ceram Coat color. And I just am watering it down in my brush as I come off of my palette over here. And I'm just kind of blending this girl a little bit or blending the background around her so that she doesn't fight with it so much. I'm just kind of pushing that paint around with my finger a little bit. I still want to see some of the flowers kind of poking through. But by watering it down, I can move it. out into the background, kind of fade it out away from her a little bit. I can have it dark where I want it dark and lighter where I want it lighter. I can build up the color if I want to. And then I'll just moisten a Q-tip and those spots where I went on to her, or I might not want that color, I can just wipe it off. As long as it's still wet, I can get it off. And I don't know if you can see, I took just a charcoal pencil and marked their skirts and extended their arms. All their arms are kind of behind their backs because I don't do hands. <laughs> I need to practice hands, but generally I don't draw hands because I'm bad at it. And then I'm just going to go up in here and kind of lift some of this off the... It would be better with the baby wipe. Cover more territory. I'm just going to lift some of the paint off of the flower there and kind of drag this out. A little bit. I want to come all the way. This blue mark right here, are we in frame? This mark right here is part of the napkin, that dark blue. See it over here? I'm just going to come over to that with this darker kind of blue gray. And that will be where her skirt ends. Okay, so now I think I would like this color in her skirt, so I'm going to start here and kind of go around her too, but that color will become kind of the color of her skirt. And this is called negative painting when you paint not the focal point, but the background around the focal point, you're paint, actually painting over the negative space that's there. So that's what we're doing. Girls are all painted around. I ended up mixing the wedge or the heritage blue with some white to lighten it up, and then I added in a little bit of this stone wedge green 
also a delta color and it matched pretty good that background that was shown through that napkin I don't know if you remember it had some crusty texture and it was kind of a grayed out green so that that worked pretty good and mixing the heritage blue that I used on this side into the paint on this side it blends nicely so I'm going to get this all dried off clean up the paint that I have here on the palette because that's kind of how I work I clean up as I go otherwise I end up with getting something in the paint that I don't want to get into the paint so and then we will continue I'm trying to keep this quick because it's fast one Friday but it's a little bit involved hang on okay I <clears throat> dried the background and I have extended their arms and I used country colors in dark flesh and I added French vanilla Americana because if you look at their faces I think you can tell there's a lot of yellow in the flesh tones so that the dark flesh by itself was too pink but where I cut them it was a little too noticeable so what I did was I floated some little bit of blue that um, heritage blue that we used in the background here I used that kind of as a shading color so I'll show you how to do that wet your brush and just take some of the excess water out you don't want it dry you want it pretty wet fully load your brush I hope you can see what I'm doing fully load your brush with your main color and then into the blue just dip a corner I'm trying to see if it's focused just a corner of blue and then you want to just work that on your palette move it across and move it back and then wherever you want to blend put the dark color toward the shadow side and just press and pull and that will automatically fade it I'm going to turn this around because I want my shadow inside here so press and pull you can walk it out a little bit if you want to onto her arm can you see that takes a little bit of practice but once you get it it's just a super easy way to add a shadow so I'm going to load my brush again with the flesh dip the corner in the blue go to a fresh I need more blue I'm going to go to a fresh spot on my palette work it across and work it back you can do this with um, a, like an easy float or a, a acrylic floating medium most of the paint companies carry them it's sort of like the same kind of as a retarder but it's for floating paint which is what that's called that's what it's a float you can do it with that you can do it with water and then just pull it down best if you can if you have enough paint to go like the full length of her arm without lifting your brush that's going to give you the best result but I'm running out of paint and I'm running into those wrinkles from the napkin so I'm having to reload here I'm just going to work it down into those wrinkles here next to her dress I want it a little deeper in there anyway You could also kind of try this with a dry brush technique that will also work I just find that this is a little easier to control now as long as you keep your shadow side on the same side of the brush you can go again without actually rinsing the brush out you can reload just don't flip your brush over you'll end up with your dark on the wrong side 
I'm keeping the shadow close to her body. And you don't want a hard line. That's why you walk it across the... I'm going to go right here again where her wing is coming across. I'm going to give her a little shadow there too. Just like that. Hope that's focused where you can see it. Okay, I'm going to give this a good dry, clean up the paint off my palette again, and then I think I'm just going to go around them with some Stabilo and maybe dry brush in her skirt here and put some Stabilo lines in her skirt. But I think the napkin is doing an okay job. Actually, you know what? Let's just do that. I have some. What is this? Old. <laughs> Folk art taffy acrylic because I tried that first with the flesh but it wasn't yellow enough. But I'm just going to put some on my finger and dab it off a little bit and I'm just going to hit the wrinkles of that napkin and hopefully it will appear as though she's got like a patterned or a Kind of a taffeta overskirt maybe. Right there is where I scrunched that napkin up when I didn't mean to. Like I kind of made a hole. But right now it's working to my advantage because it's given me a lot of good texture right there. I think that worked. And I think it did. A little bit of paint on her dress right there that we don't want. There we go. So yeah, this is that's their arms are probably dry enough. I'm gonna just keep going here. I'm gonna grab my Stabilo pencil. Where, so we're gonna use it on her skirt just to get the shadow in there. Just make it appear as though we've got some wrinkles in the skirt. I can take that one off. I'll go underneath the bodice to kind of make it look like they're two separate pieces. So I created all the shadows with the Stabilo and activated that, trying to keep them all kind of to the left side or wherever shadows might naturally happen. And now I'm just taking some of that taffy on a dry brush and I'm just dry brushing and hitting those wrinkles that were created with the napkin. Just to, it kind of brings everything together and sort of gives the piece a little bit of a glow, I think. Very little paint in the brush. Just kind of letting it glide over the surface. If you think you have too much, just wipe it off before you go onto your page. You just want to catch the tops and you can kind of build it up like if I wanted more light above her head right there I can come back again and again with that same dry brush still with just a little bit of paint on the brush and lighten that area up just like that. A little more up here. A little heavy right there. A 
and since this is lighter anyway, takes a little bit more. I already did one coat over here, but I'm going to come back and just really, really lightly hit those wrinkles and just build up a little more lightness. So I'm going to leave it here. I will work on this some more and um, include some pictures at the end, some still photos at the end, where you can kind of see what else I've done to finish off the page. But I wanted to show you how you can use the napkin for the background and then just use whatever clip art or your own images that you've drawn, um, coloring book, images, whatever you want. Now I could go in and put branches on her head or feathers on her head. I could further embellish this and just keep going and going and add things in the background. But this is a good start. But I just wanted to give you the idea. Hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. And in the meantime, Go make some art. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.